Good morning. Ooh, that was a close up, wasn't it? It is December 17th and it's morning. You can still you can see a little tiny glimpse of the sun over there. <laughs> and I'm heading out into my sewing space. Got my little cup here of hot drink. Not sure what you would call that. It's sort of a non-alcoholic um, mulled wine. No wine included. <laughs> probably for the best seeing as I'm sewing. So I'm heading into my sewing space just to make sure that I can um, get a pair of pajamas sewn up. So balancing you, carrying my fabric and my hot drink and getting ready to sew. Okay. <laughs> I'm settled in my sewing space. I don't tend to um, film down here because honestly, I'm ashamed of what it looks like. <laughs> not ashamed, that's not the right, um, not, that's not the right word because I mean, shame is useless anyway, isn't it? But uh, the thing is that I have to share my sewing space with um, a lot of other things. <laughs> And when I say that, it's not really um, fair because honestly, it's mine, my hobby imposing on <laughs> the others, not the other way around. So um, this is sort of an extra um, room in our house. It's only accessible via like the outside. So I can't, I need to go outside to get into my space. And that's actually... I've been thinking about that and that's actually a very, very good idea because uh, then when I'm in my sewing space, that means that I'm sort of committed to it because I need to put my shoes on and <laughs> walk around the house and back into this little room. And, and that also kind of means that I am left in peace when I'm sewing, <laughs> if that makes sense. And um, this is... This was designed to be only like a storage uh, storage space mostly um, uh, that we keep everything in that can't be in the house, like the skis and the uh, uh, extra clothes that's too small for my eldest and not <laughs> doesn't fit my youngest <laughs> yet. Um, and things like, uh, I don't know, extra like pots and pans and, you know, everything really that you don't have to keep inside the house and then that uh, my husband has um, set up his home office here so that he can work from home uh, from time to time um, he is in research um, but he's also an engineer so uh, he needs to be in the lab at um, at times uh, and then uh, when he wants to he can also work from home and then, so he has a pretty substantial <laughs> computer area set up here there's also things like he's an, a very avid tennis player so he uses this space to string rackets and things like that and i have my mahoosive printer in here <laughs> That's the A0 plotter that my lovely husband bought for me so that I, I don't really often have to sit and tape A4 pages together anymore, which is really, that was such a lovely gesture on his part because, oh, I'm not one of those people who can find joy in sticking A4 uh, papers together. I know that some of you enjoy it and feel like it's sort of meditative, to do that kind of repetitive thing with cutting and pasting and everything, but I've tried, but I can't locate the joy in that, <laughs> to be perfectly fair. Um, so I do it when I have to, but seeing as he was lovely and generous uh, and got me a very old and very used uh, A0 printer, but that nonetheless works, um, he saves me a lot of work. So that's, but obviously, I mean, it's huge huge so it's uh, it's standing on the floor behind me um so this place has become um <laughs> rather crowded let's put it like that um and 
uh, this coming summer I'm hoping to sort of send my husband and the kids up to the cabin for a couple of days or three maybe four <laughs> so that I can have a really good tidy up because I I don't want to do this in the winter because I mean it's it's hard to do it in the winter because you need I need to drag things out of here and obviously I mean it's a lot of snow so um, not a lot actually but it's snow so everything that will be dragged out will be wet um, so it's not a good idea so I think I'll do it this summer um, and uh, and yeah have a really good clear out and yeah and organize things a little better because yeah it's not it's not grand <laughs> the way it is right now um, and actually, my husband was saying last year that maybe you should just put up a little, like a tiny little shed almost, like insulated, obviously, but uh, in the garden so that either I can use that as a separate sewing space or that he can use it as his gaming room slash home office. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then better utilize this space. Um, uh, and uh, actually, that's a pretty good idea. We don't have a huge garden, but we could actually, if we put our heads together, I think we could actually put up a little like shed in the garden. But I don't know. That's a project for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I brought you down here um, with me because I'm starting to sew up the pajamas, as I said. Um, I have some other things I need to be done today too, um, but um, I don't have like any like really firm plans that needs to be done by a specific time and everything. And that is honestly so lovely to be able to kind of, um, yes, <laughs> not have to watch the time all the time, because actually some of the times I think that's what stresses me out, that I have to like, I keep watching like the time and and always being like we have to leave now we have to leave now get your shoes on <laughs> all of the time and that to have a day where there's nothing like no firm plans other than like ideas on what we want to get done <sighs> so good <laughs> so yeah anyway enough of this uh chatter I'm going to um head on with my sewing and um Hopefully I'll have something to show you afterwards. Yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Okay. It is much later in the day than I was hoping. Because <laughs> this took far too long. My goodness, I always underestimate how much time it takes. But the pyjamas are done. And I think they look quite cute, if I do say so myself. However, I'm going to do the exact thing that, you know, sewists do. We point out the errors that we make, don't we? <laughs> but honestly, you know, either I did the error while I cut it out, or I just, you know, wasn't paying attention when I put it together. So... The Itch to Stitch um, Pine Cove PJs are kind of a wrap style um, top and you sort of lace it up in the, <laughs> or you tie it at the side. And the band that goes around the neck and ends in the tie um, is first sewn together at the back and then um, sewn together with the kind of ties in between. So you kind of flip it over the raw edge. Um, and what I managed to do, this is the front, sorry, it's a bit hard to see. Oh, there we are. And then I sewed it this way on. <laughs> so it's upside down. It's fine on the inside. So if I just managed to at least, you know, once I'd made the error, so I've probably sewn the wrong sides together at the back on one of the ties. Um, but at least if I'd had my head together when I put it on, I would have at least had put the ones that were upside down 
inside. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those face palm moments, isn't it? But you know what? Once I had discovered it, I had already sort of, I was stitching it down when I discovered what I've done. And this being flannel and kind of has a, almost like a looped back, unpicking is not advisable. <laughs> not on that, on that kind of long straight edge anyway. So, because I mean, the it's going to loosen up every thread on the inside and it's going to be hard to cover it up afterwards. So I decided to leave it be and let that be sort of one of the quirks of homemade clothes. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, yeah. But I put a little um, Kylie and the Machine tag inside. I'm not going to say it out loud because it's kind of a bad word in there. Um, but I think um, the person that go to have this will um, think it's funny <laughs> which is what matters isn't it so I've made up the bottoms uh, the pajama bottoms I had to sort of wing it a little bit on the length of the elastic obviously because I haven't exactly got her <laughs> waist measurement um, and I think that this time I took note of the width of the elastic. I'm not sure I did that the last time. Um, I tend to use like one inch elastic most of the time and this called for a two inch. So it's quite wide elastic, which can be very comfortable, but I'm a little worried that it might require a, a closer fit, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, not sure if that was advisable, really. Um, but yeah, the pattern called for it. And yeah, I just made it. And let's hope that it'll all be good in the end. What I'm probably going to do is to, after Christmas or when she has opened it, um, I might say that she should try it on. And if they fit, I can stitch down the elastic like make a, a center um, stitch down in the elastic itself to sort of help the elastic lay flatter so that it doesn't roll. Um, I've only now kind of stitched a little zigzag in the side seam to hold it in place because, well, you know, elastic is the bane of my existence, really. Uh, <laughs> I always struggle if if it's you know if it's not like a children's uh, trouser or something that's you know where, where it's not that much but for any kind of adult pattern um, I don't know no matter how careful I feel like I am being it always kind of wants to twist for me so I have to go over it like four times until I'm certain that there's no twist in there and uh yeah i did have to, i did struggle a little bit to to make sure because i i made the um, the pajama bottoms in maybe one size bigger than she really needs because i didn't want it to be restrictive at all but then of course you can't really have trousers that or, or bottoms uh, pajama bottoms that will just you know fall off your hips either so yeah i had to sort of <laughs> Uh, gather it pretty um, a lot to to make the elastic that I deemed proper in, fit inside so it was um, yeah I struggled a little bit with that the rest of the the sewing for these uh, PJs are really straightforward and the only thing that can be a little puzzling is the attachment of the she calls it the collar <laughs> uh, in the pattern, but you know, the, the band that goes around the, the opening of the top. Um, but uh, Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles, she has a sew along for that part too. So, you know, when in doubt, <laughs> look at YouTube. Um, 
I am now heading in to have grab a little bite because I hadn't haven't eaten since breakfast, so my tummy is rumbling. <laughs> um, and I'm going to have a little food, and then I'm actually heading down to the shopping centre to hopefully be able to secure the last few gifts um, that I need to to buy and. Um, I mean, shops in Norway are never open on Sundays, but um, they make an exception the last, you know, two or three Sundays before Christmas because it's better for the shops and it's better for the people that it's not so crowded like on a, on a Sunday that the whole town will be gathering there. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to to secure a last uh, the last few gifts. And then there will be wrapping. So I don't know if there will be anything more, to be honest, that could be even remotely interesting to you. <laughs> so I think that I'm going to wrap things up for the moment and um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.